Fantastic. We still have people still jumping on board with us. Welcome, everyone. We're so excited uh, to kick off our Dev Talk season this year. Um, and I just wanted to go through a few housekeeping rules with everyone and get us all set up for this cool webinar that we're going to do for you today. So just a few housekeeping rules. Um, we have a question and answer box at the bottom. You'll see this. Um, if you have any questions during or after the presentation, if you could please post them there. We'll, we'll answer all of those after Jose's presentation today. It'll just be a little easier to address all of those, but certainly post them there. If there's any issue whatsoever, um, or you come up with a question afterwards and you're just dying to ask us, please send those to developer at zebra.com. That is our email uh, box, and we will make sure that Jose or one of our Zebra team uh, will address that for you. We are recording this webinar today. This will be posted on the Zebra channel, so you can see it if you're registered here. Um, pretty much uh, by the end of today, by the end of business day, and I'm US time, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then we'll go ahead and post that to our YouTube playlist, and we'll publish that in our newsletter and on our Twitter and LinkedIn channels, so you'll know when that's up as well. Uh, but feel free to ask uh, if you haven't seen it or when it's going to be up. It usually takes about a week for that YouTube playlist, but we'll have it up on our Zebra channel on this particular tool later on today. So with that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Jose. I'm going to let him kick this off and um, introduce himself. And we're reviewing the verifiable, verifiable credential SDK for Zebra devices. So we're really excited to share this with you today. Um, oh, one quick last note, if you haven't already signed up for any of our Dev Talks or our Dev Buzz newsletter that comes monthly, please go to our developer portal at zebra, or excuse me, developer.zebra.com. Okay, uh, with that, Jose, I think we're sharing your screen and we're all good to go. Thank you, Stacy. So, I'm going to start with my presentation today about how you can build applications using decentralized identities by means of the Zebra IOTA HSDK. My name is Jose Manuel Cantera. And I work in the IOTA Foundation as technical analyst and project lead. I am leading projects related to global trade and supply chains. And particularly, I am leading the initiatives together with, with Zebra Technologies in which we are collaborating in building all these SDKs and APIs that we are presenting in this series of, of webinars. Well, for those of you who don't know what IOTA is, just a quick reminder, we introduced IOTA previous webinars, but it would be good to remind people what IOTA is. So IOTA is a distributed layer. So IOTA is offering what blockchains offer, but a little bit more. So with IOTA, you can build permissionless applications. You can exploit the capabilities of distributed layer technology. When it comes to being resistant to modification, so you can anchor data to the distributed layer and being, uh, and, and being resistant to modification on a decentralized basis. So with distributed layer, there is no uh, central clearinghouse where all the participants in the network are relying. But instead of that, there is a distributed consensus, decentralized consensus that allows to, to build decentralized applications. Um, as it happens with, with blockchains, IOTA is open source. We, we all of our software, our well node software, is, it's open source and available with friendly license, licenses. But on top of that, IOTA is an scalable DLT. It's energy efficient and it is fearless. It means that whenever you transfer value or whenever you transfer data through the IOTA distributed ledger, you, you don't need to pay a fee. And, and why IOTA has these characteristics uh, is because of, of the data structure behind IOTA, which is not a blockchain. 
And IOTA is based on a directed acyclic graph instead of a blockchain. It means that in order to confirm transactions, blocks have not, ha, have not to be mined. Instead, in order to confirm transactions, you need to confirm previous transactions on the network, previous transactions that have been generated by other users in the network. And this allows us to have less bottlenecks and also less energy requirements, making IOTA more scalable than traditional blockchains. And this directed acyclic graph, it is called the tangle because of the structure you can see on the screen. So as transactions arriving into the network must confirm other transactions, they are creating a directed acyclic graph that is more powerful in the end than traditional traditional uh, blockchains. So um, who is developing the IOTA technologies? Well, the main coordination is done by the IOTA Foundation. It's a non-for-profit uh, institution in Germany. And together with the community, we are developing the IOTA technologies. On the other hand, the IOTA Foundation partnership with relevant industry players with relevant academia with other non-for-profits in order to demonstrate the capabilities of the iota distributed layer develop reference use cases reference architecture and also uh, the way to demonstrate the uh, potential of the technology in different verticals industries and sectors Furthermore, IOTA has been selected by the European Commission for a public pre-commercial procurement in order to support the future uh, European blockchain services infrastructure. This is the ambition of the European Commission to have a public service infrastructure for blockchain services within Europe that can scale, that can scale to the level of billions of transactions per minute and support business to government and government to government business process. It could be digital passports, customs, traceability in supply chains, any use case where you can imagine that blockchain technologies can benefit or can provide a value to the society will be done through the ABSI. And IOTA is one of the four technologies that are the candidates to, to support this infrastructure and we are working hard to be finally uh, selected by the European Commission. So now going to the point to the uh, today's uh, webinar, we need to talk about decentralized identity. So essentially, what is decentralized identity, and what is the role of IOTA in a decentralized identity scheme? Well, first of all, we need to to think about how we how do we use identities today. So today we are using identities either on a centralized basis. So you, for instance, have an identity against your internet service provider that it is your email address. That is the case of a centralized identity. Or we are using federated identities where we rely on a centralized service like Google, Facebook, whatever, for our identity. And we use services like login with Facebook, login with, uh, with uh, Google, etc but the the problem with with those kind of services is that you you are relying on a centralized service and in the end you are giving the, the to others the ownership or your and control of your personal data and that's it's always a, a has has privacy concerns has also interoperability concerns etc etc and the idea is to be able to to go towards self-sovereign identity so that people can manage and control their own identity and their own personal data and that they can share their identity or their data associated to their identities at their will, not at the will of, the, of, of an external service. But not only for people, it's interesting the decentralized identity, but also for organizations. So you can imagine an organization that needs to register in several countries in order to trade within those different countries. Can we imagine a world where, where organizations with just one identity 
can they trade in multiple countries and that identity can be recognized by the different countries without relying on a centralized service that's the challenge but also identity for devices so we have many 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 autonomous devices that are uh, playing a role on supply chains for instance and how we can make the interaction of those devices more traceable more auditable and end-to-end -end. so this centralized identity can also help us to achieve these objectives so and how this can be done using distributed layer technology and the iota tangle and how actually decentralized identity could work well first thing in order for the centralized identity to work is a standardization so and that's why the w3c has standardized the main elements decentralized identifiers and verifiable credentials in order to support the centralized identity concept and on the other hand we have the capabilities of the distributed layer where we have a network we have an infrastructure with, which can reach consensus on a decentralized basis and can store pieces of data which are resistant to modification and that is iota and the iota tank on top of that if we think about the three different roles of decentralized identities we can understand the picture better so we have different three different roles the issuer the holder and the subject so who is the issuer the issuer is a trustworthy party that can issue and sign credentials so you can think the issuer um, that can be the government the issuer can be a particular organization that issues credentials or any any other uh, party that can can issue new credentials but then the next one the next role is the holder the holder is usually the subject all of of the of the identity and the holder acquire hold and present credentials and essentially the holder is the one who is who is going to be you or me when uh, um, going to uh, getting access to a particular internet service or getting access to a particular building or getting access to a restaurant nowadays is going to present a credential issued by a trustworthy party party and then we have the verifier the verifier is the party who is verifying your credential presenting by you as a holder and the the good thing about decentralized identity is when you present credentials, the verifier does not need to contact the issuer to verify your credentials. So essentially, it would mean that when you go to a restaurant and you present your health passport, the verifier, which is the, the restaurant owner, the verifier does not need to contact the public authorities, but just needs to verify your credential through a public infrastructure, which is the distributed ledger infrastructure, in this case, the IOTA tank. So understanding these three roles, you can understand that decentralized identity, how decentralized identity can work. Well, let's enter into more details on what is a decentralized identifier and what is a verifiable credential in terms of the W3C standards. So a decentralized identifier, which is what would you use to, uh, to identify, is a new kind of URI. That URI is uh, associated to the scheme DID. So DID is the prefix that you are going to, to use for your own identifier. Then there is a, a method that can depend on the particular um, um, uh, network behind that identifier and then a specific identifier so in the case of iota you can have the idea iota and then a long number of characters which is the uh, uh, the particular identifier so this decentralized identifier as i said before is a url and as a, any uri in this case can be resolved and can be resolved to a, con a document this document is going to have different cryptographic key materials associated to your identity and the good thing is that this document can be anchored to the iota distributed ledger so any party 
getting access to the IOTA network, to a node in the IOTA network, can resolve this identity. And of course, use the public key materials there, for instance, to verify credentials issued by another party. And this is when it comes the uh, second data, the second kind of document, which is the verifiable credential document. So you need to remember that the DID, the DID document only contains public key materials, cryptographic materials associated to the controller of that identity, nothing more. So the claims associated to your identity, for instance, what is your name, what is your nationality, what vaccine have you been administered, whatever, that is in a second kind of document, which is the verifiable credential. And the verifiable credential is again a JSON document, a JSON LD document with the graph of the verifiable information. And here we have again the three roles that I explained before. We have the issuer. The issuer is going to sign you the verifiable credential. So the issuer with his private key is going to, 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 to provide a signature for your credential. The subject is the, the, the person, the device, the organization, which is what, for which the credential makes claims about. The holder is who controls, usually controls the credential. Normally it is the subject, but it cannot be. And the verifier is the one who verifies the credential. How a verifier can verify a credential? Essentially because the credential is signed and you know what is the identity of the issuer. So if you know the identity of the issuer, you can go to the distributed layer, resolve the decentralized identity document, find the public key, and then as a result, verify the signature. And this is how essentially the decentralized identity works together with the distributed ledger because the verifier can always go to the distributed ledger find the public key materials of the issuer and say oh yes this is a, a, a this credential has been verified it, of course if the signature is it's properly generated and corresponds to the uh, to the identity and public key, to the corresponding identity and public key. And how this is represented? Well, a verifiable credentials, you need to think about it uh, as a graph. So you have a graph where there is a credential. The credentials is one is of one type. These types uh, can be standardized. For instance, in schema.org, there are some credential types. Schema.org is a vocabulary for for JSON-LD, for which uh, webmasters are, are very familiar. And then we have the credential subject. The subject is the person, organization, device for which credentials, sorry, for which claims are, um, for which claims are generated to. So essentially a credential subject could be in this case, Pat, and the claim is that he is an alumni of the example university. That's a claim. There can be multiple claims in a credential. So Pat uh, is an alumni of example university and lives in this address, whatever. And this is the credential graph. And there is another subgraph, which is the proof graph. So the proof graph contains the signature of the credential, not only the, the, the bytes, but also the metadata about the signature. What kind of signature is, what is and what is the creator there, which is essentially the verification method used that can be used to verify the credential. That is very important because with the verification method at the bottom, you can go to the distributed layer, resolve the DID, and then verify the, the credential. So here, here you can see the, the JSON-LD, the JSON representation of your credential. You have the ID of the credential, the type, who the issuer is, here you can see an HTTP URI, but usually you will find here as well a DID URI. And with that DID URI, you can know who the issuer is and go to the distributed layer in order to verify the proof. And you can see here the proof, the type of proof, when it was created, the purpose of the proof and the verification method 
that usually can also point, as I said before, to a DID, to a DID verification method that, as we saw previously, will be found in the DID document and will be obtained through the IOTA distributed ledger. That's the important piece to understand the, re the, the, the relationship between a verifiable credential and a DID. So there are two different kinds of documents. One, the DID document, and second, the verifiable credential document. And there is a third kind of document, which is the verifiable presentation. What is the verifiable presentation? A verifiable presentation is a wrapper of a verifiable credential that is being signed by the holder of the credential when presenting the credential. Why? Because when you are presenting a credential, you may be challenged by the verifier to prove that you control the DID of the, of the subject of the credential. So essentially, that, that is not a credential that you have found randomly and you present that. No, you, you may be challenged to say, well, well please, but please mm, demonstrate that you prove that DID. And, you, and, and, and in that case, you can do that because if you sign the document of the, of the verifiable credential and add an additional proof with uh, your, your signature, in that case, the verifier can go and not only verify the credential itself, but also verify the presentation and, 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 and verify that, you, that, that the signature is valid and correspond to the identity of the holder. And how that would be done? Remember, any time that a proof is verified, you need to resolve the corresponding DID on the distributed ledger, on the IOTA distributed ledger, you get the public keys, and with the public keys, you can verify the signature, as it happens usually in, uh, in digital signatures based on public key cryptography. So, now, what after we have learned about all the theory in summary of course uh, uh, what what are what we are providing you as a zebra developer as an isp what can you take advantage how you can take advantage of these technologies and, and and how you can play with that well first of all we need to say that iota has implemented the w3c did and verifiable credentials under the iota identity framework but you would say to me, well, that, that's fine, that's, that's, that's uh, very good, but how I can use this together with my Zebra devices? So if I want to use a Zebra device for verified credentials with my scanner, how can I do that? Well, this is what we want to do here with providing this SDK. We want to link the Zebra SDK world and the Zebra technology, uh, technologies, readers, scanners, printers, you name them with the technologies that software technologies behind them, data wedge, link OS, EMDK, you name them as well, with the IOTA frameworks and the IOTA tangle. And this layer in the middle is the HSDK. So using the HSDK and some of the and, and the enablers, and the first enabler that we are presenting today is the identity enabler. You can build these applications that combine the two themes, the two the two um, uh, layers, the Zebra layer and the IOTA layer. And how, how this is enabled? Well, the HSDK essentially allows you to build web applications, web applications that can be packaged as Android native applications that interact with the IOTA distributed layer using the Zebra Edge devices. And, and the, the good thing is that as the web application has finally packaged as hybrid Android applications. You can take advantage of Zebra Data Witch or any other, I would say, um, native capability of Zebra devices. This is how we have architected and, and envisioned the SDK. But not only that, that this edge technology combined with other services on the cloud, like RFID data services of the track and trace ledger APIs that we already presented can be combined with the edge capabilities to build complete applications. And today, what we are going to explain is how we have combined in the HSDK Zebra data wedge on 
TC devices with the uh, in, with the identity enabler of the edge SDK together with IOTA identity and the IOTA tangle to build decentralized identity applications that is that exploit decentralized identity. So today we are focusing on the left hand side of the picture and we 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 show how using the HSDK, the identity enabler of the HSDK, how Zebra data weights and, and scanner devices can be combined with IOTA identity to build decentralized decentralized applications for for supply chains, for self sovereign identities, or for other for other use cases. As I said before, uh, our HSDK it is open source. It is in the Zebra Dex repository. And as I said before, the allows you to build Android hybrid Android applications based on the capacitor and spell web framework. And, and in the in the repository, you will find how we have you can integrate Zebra data words. And, and uh, as a starting point for you to use the SDK, there are three reference blueprint applications that are going to be demonstrated in just uh, a few seconds, which is the holder application which is the wallet of credentials, the verifier applications, how you can interoperate um, uh, with, with credentials verification, and the device onboarding application, which is an application that allows to provide decentralized identities for your devices. And with these decentralized identities, devices can start uh, recording authenticated scan events on the IOTA tangle, and you can have end-to-end -end traceability of this event. So if one scanning event in the end generates an EPCIS business event, for instance, shipping or storing, that end-to-end -end traceability can be achieved through, through the decentralized identity of the device and through the IOTA distributed ledger as well. So now, without more delay, now it comes the, the demo time. So the demo is going to play through a video. The video is like seven minutes. The video has been recorded with the real TC21 device, and uh, uh, please uh, uh, have a look at it and, and enjoy. I'm going now to play the video for seven minutes, and later we will reconvene when the video is finished. One second, the video. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this demonstration of the Zebra IOTA Edge SDK. I'm going to develop the demonstration using a Zebra TC21 device enabled with Zebra Data Witch technology. First of all, the Zebra IOTA Edge SDK includes a set of reference applications that can be used to exercise all the functionality offered by this SDK. First of all, is the holder application that I install in my, in my device. And you can see that now it is open. In this holder application is a wallet for, of credentials so the user can manage and present, present his credentials. So to start up using the application, you need to set a name for your wallet and then automatically a new identity, decentralized identity is going to be created for our user and recorded and called to the IOTA distributed ledger. Once an identity is created, we can start adding new credentials to our wallet. However, here we are going to add ourselves, our own credentials, but in a real case, those credentials will be imported from those issued by a real issuer. We add a new credential. This credential will be self-signed. It means that the issuer and the subject are just the same. You can find here the information about the credential and the important part is the subject. The subject contains the decentralized identifier of our user and the one that we created in the initial step of this application. You can find here other personal information. Then the, these credentials can be presented to a proper verifier. This is done through the shared credential. The way of presenting a credential is through a data matrix code. The data matrix code 
just encodes the JSON-LD representation of a verifiable presentation. You can see here what is the JSON-LD code that is actually behind the data matrix code. As now, uh, we will need to verify to present the credential and then verify. As I only have one device, what I'm going to do is to capture the data matrix code and then scan it, the, the data matrix code using the verifier application. I'm going to capture. And when it is captured, it will be in my screen. And in my screen, I now can go to the verifier application and scan the data matrix code. Once the data matrix code has been scanned, the um, signatures included in the credentials are going to be verified using the public key materials recorded on the decentralized identifier which remember that it is anchored to the IOTA distributed ledger. In this case, it is a valid credential with all the data that we saw, uh, we have shown before. As the last step in our demonstration, I'm going to show to you how a new, a new device identifier can be obtained for a device. And the steps that I will be showing is how a device can be actually onboarded on a supply chain so that there is end-to-end -end traceability for the events generated by that device on supply chains. For doing so, I'm going to go to another application, which is the device identifier application. In this application, I start with setting a name for my device. And after setting a name for my device, a new decentralized identity for the device is going to be generated. But our objective is to actually obtain a new verifiable credential for our device that contains all the claims that can be made by that device. So first of all, we need to request a device ID credential where we generate a QR code that just contains all the claims made by the device and that, that will be used by the owner of the device to issue a credential for the device. So in this case, these are the uh, claims made by the device, like the identifier, the model, the manufacturer, etc. So with this data matrix code that I'm going to capture as well, we can go to the issuer application. So I have now my data matrix code capture, and I can go now to the issuer application that in our case is just the same. Sorry. Is just the same as the holder application. And here we can just capture the data matrix code. We now have the device claims. And with these device claims, we are going now to issue a credential in this case where the subject of the credential is the device itself. So we issue the credential. And now we have a credential for our device. Well, now the last step is capture, so sharing this credential to our device so that the device now will have in its wallet the credential just generated. So we can, we do the, uh, the same procedure. And now we go to the device ID application to the next step and we just capture the data matrix that contains the credential for the device. And the important thing now that you can see is the subject of our credential is actually the DID associated to our device and the issuer of the credential is the device owner, myself. And as I said before, this credential can be later presented by the device against, for instance, the track and trace ledger API so that there is end-to-end -end traceability for the device events generated by this device and traceability against those business events, for instance, ETCIS events that have been generated, that have been uh, associated to those device events. Thank you very much. And this is the end of our presentation today. 
Okay, so thank you for for seeing the uh, the the video, and we can continue now after the the um, the demo made. Please uh, record your questions if you have questions about the demo, and we are going to continue with the with the presentation. So, what I wanted to show to you some inspiration that this SDK and this work we are doing. Uh, what kind of application? So, for instance, one interesting application would be not only to have uh, health passports based on, on verifiable credentials and decentralized identifiers, but also being able to record uh, any kind of digital twin associated to the vaccine you are taking. So, essentially, with, with decentralized identifiers, verifiable credentials and the and, and the EPCIS events recording that could be enabled with, with, with the I, I, IOTA HSDK, you could just discover that not only that uh, you, you, you were vaccinated, but what happened, what was the traceability of your vaccine? For what, what was the temperature in what it was, uh, it was kept? What, what was the different steps in the supply chain that are relevant to, to, to the vaccine that that happen. So, so this kind of applications is the kind of uh, uh, applications we, we think that with the IOTA, uh, Zebra IOTA HSDK we can enable. And the combination of uh, decentralized identifiers, not only for persons, but also for organizations and for devices can enable these, uh, uh, these kind of applications, can enable end-to-end -end traceability, can enable better auditability, but Furthermore, can enable more more security and more decentralization, and and in the end as well, increasing the the, the privacy uh, of 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 the different actors. So what we are doing? So what what is our roadmap? Well, in the past we presented the track and trace ledger APIs based on based on IOTA. They are available in Zebra Savannah. We are presenting today the identity enabler of the HSDK, but as we, as we had said before, we would like to extend this. We would like to include more enablers in the HSDK. We would like to, for instance, include an EPCIS 2.0 enabler that would uh, uh, make it possible a use case like the one with the full passports and vaccines explained before. And, and we envision a world where the Zebra HSDK, together with some cloud services, can enable this, this uh, trusted and decentralized supply chain application that fully exploit identity. So in the end, during the year, we are going to continue to extend this HSDK and our uh, ledger APIs that are uh, available in the in the Savannah sandbox, but in the future. Uh, could uh, uh, would be available as well as a real uh, production ready service. But in any case, in this journey, we would need your your input as as ISBs or as, or as members of our IOTA community. That, that we know we have today many many audience of our IOTA community here in the in the webinar. So we need your your input. We, we need your feedback. We need to know what would you would like to build. You know. We need to know if, if the APIs are good, if the if the if the APIs solve, can can help to solve your concrete business process and and how your your concrete use case and how we can improve improve it. And please, uh, uh, we would like you to to engage with us in our roadmap. What resources do you have? So you have the identity framework, uh, GitHub repository, but also, we have tutorials, four tutorials of the identity enabler that explain in more detail with what we have, I have explained today in our, in our webinar. We have the previous tutorials that we introduced with the track and trace ledger APIs. We have summary blog posts that introduce the HSDK and the identity enabler. So uh, you have plenty of materials, but not only that, we have uh, a Stack Exchange for developer support, a uh, Stack Exchange channel devoted to IOTA. And today we can announce that we have opened on the IOTA Discord server 
uh, a new channel called Zebra Community Dev Channel, where you can get in touch with our with the IOTA experts and the Zebra experts on on all has to do with Zebra uh, development together with IOTA technologies. On the other hand, we have as well uh, the usual contact points. So if you are an ISV or you are a member of our IOTA community, you can get in touch with us and 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 we can talk about uh, about your doubts or or, or or we can inspire you. Nothing more on my side for today. So giving back the control to Stacy and, and James, uh, just to, to to let to let me know if there are there are questions from the audience. Okay, great. Um, this was such good information. Um, I, let me get to our Q and A here because we had a few conversations going on. Um, okay, from. Here we go. It seems when verifier, verifier, verify holder is recorded in Tangle. Um, can this be turned off for privacy reasons? So they're asking if the verify holder is rec is recorded in Tangle and if it can be turned off for privacy reasons. Uh, sorry, could, could you? So let, yeah, you know what? This question's a little difficult to interpret. I apologize. But I think they're just asking for an overview of whether or not you can turn off this. Uh, so, so essentially, the, yeah, yeah the, the verifier in principle does not need to contact the issuer to verify the credential, just needs to go to the IOTA distributed layer, resolve the DID of the issuer as a result the public key of the issuer will be known and with the public key of the issuer the verifier can can verify the credential okay. so so that's the different different than in other in non non decentralized schemes because in non decentralized you may need to to call home or to to call the issuer to to verify something and in this case the the infrastructure uh, the, the the decentralized infrastructure adds like the 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 I would say the 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 the, the PKI the public key infrastructure and 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 you don't need to to call the the issuer in that case. Okay. And please reach out if this didn't completely answer your question. We're happy to address this. Um, I'm monitoring the question window right now, and so far that was the only question that we had regarding today's webinar. If there's any other questions, we encourage you to post them at this time in our question and answer window. Um, in the meantime, thank you, Jose, for putting this up. Um, you can see these are all of our Zebra developer channels, our developer portals at developer.zebra.com. You can also request to be part of our private LinkedIn community group. It's specifically meant for uh, Zebra developers, um, a lot of great wealth of information in there. Um, here we have another question. <laughs> Do Zebra use the IOTA main tangle? Does Zebra use the, uh, the questions are coming in a little chopped up today. So the, yeah, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. So um, the initial, the sandbox version of the track and trace ledger APIs, for instance, is using the uh, the DevNet, but with a view that because this is a sandbox, just a sandbox, but in a production, in a future production ready scenario, yes, we will be we will be using the mainnet to to anchor events to the distributed uh, to the to the distributed ledger, and in the case of all the examples that I presented today uh, and the demonstration that, that was presented today is using the centralized identities which are on the on the mainnet. So no no uh, no no devnet etc. So in, in 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 that case the examples we we put today are in in mainnet. Excellent. 
Um, we have another good question. Some people that are a little newer to using the Zebra and IOTA SDKs. So the question was, is the Edge SDK a wrapper around the IOTA identity framework? Simplifying yeah, this. Exactly. So, so behind the scenes, there is the IOTA identity framework, and we provide uh, wrappers and libraries and also SBEL components that facilitate building applications using the, the IOTA identity uh, framework. So yes, that's correct. Okay, great. Um, Dimitri asks, are we going to see synergies between IOTA and Zebra in assembly and Shimmer as well? For sure. And the, um, the, 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 the thing that, that uh, or, or the, the main reason we are presented, presenting is because we are we are finding a lot of interest within the Zebra community in the in the distributed ledger technologies and as distributed ledger technologies and particularly within IOTA and the value proposition of IOTA is evolving to offer more decentralized networks like Shimmer and uh, smart contracts platforms like Assembly as, as these technologies uh, um, start developing and being deployed by, by IOTA, we think that the Zebra community can benefit a lot from them. And once they are, uh, they, they, they progress, uh, we will introduce up, upcoming webinars where we can show how they can be, they can be used in combination with Zebra technologies as well. So, so positive as well with, with that. And I'm not sure if I'm getting this right, but I think it is. It might be a typo. Will DIDs in mainnet re be required to be persisted? Not sure if that's correct. No, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean the the um, the the identities. Uh, if you refer to the decentralized identities, yeah, the decentralized identities are recorded in. Uh, a data, a data message on the distributed ledger, and and you would need uh, persistence mechanisms like a permanent at the moment to 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 keep that identity uh, available uh, for for a long period of time. So that's that's correct. You need you need the uh, uh, the support of of a permanent or the support of a selective permanent, which is something. Uh, we are developing at the moment as well. So the capability of, of selecting the persistent messages that you want to keep for a long time. Okay, great. That was the next question. Okay. Um, please clarify the following follow-up question. Can the issuer trace holder where holder has been via verify event log and tangle? Um, in principle, not because because the I mean the the interactions with the uh, with the node it, because in the end you can so so any any participant can deploy his own node so so essentially you don't need to contact uh, the IEF nodes in order to to resolve a DID. So you can just go to your own node and and query and resolve the decentralized ID. So you need you don't need to contact any third party node. You can deploy your own nodes. That that's the the beauty of the model because this this is a centralized infrastructure, a permissionless infrastructure where anybody can participate and and deploy their own nodes and and have their own infrastructure that does not rely on third parties. And, and as a result, a, a third party cannot log your, your request. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, Stephen asks, it just came in. Again, I'm not sure if this is correct, but will Epic's Gen 2 standard be based on IOTA alone? So, sorry, could you repeat that? Will EPCIS Gen 2 uh, standard? EPCIS, yeah. So yes. yeah, EPCIS is um, 
a, a standard for recording supply chain events. So supply chain events can be the arrival of some pallet at a warehouse. That's a supply chain event. You see, it is an arriving event. Can be the shipping. So when when a transporter goes into a warehouse and and takes the the pallet. That is a shipping event. All that kind of events um, are represented using JSON LD, JSON documents, and and IOTA. In IOTA, we are contributing and also with Zebra and everything and other another uh, companies to the to the standard that is being finalized in a in a very few weeks. And regarding that, our the relationship between EPCIS and IOTA is that. Whenever a, a, an EPCIS event happens, shipping, arriving, whatever uh, uh, event you may imagine, that event can be anchored to the IOTA distributed ledger. And that means that if I, I'm the transporter and I generate the event, then I cannot repudiate the event or I cannot alter the event. The event is immutable. Why? Because it's going to be anchored to the, to the distributed ledger. And if I share my event as a transporter with my customer, I cannot, I cannot change that, that event, but my customer as well cannot dispute the content of the event because it is immutably recorded and there is, there is no way to, to, to modify. And, and as a result, without having a central point of trust between the different participants in the supply chain, you can enable trusted and decentralized supply chains. And, and the relationship between EPCIS and IOTA is that IOTA can be the commitment layer for EPCIS events. That does not mean, it does not mean that necessarily that the EPCIS events are going to be stored on the tangle, but proofs of the existence of those events can be stored on the tangle. And later, those proofs can be used by the different participants to trust between or among each other. That's the, the, the relationship. And our plan as well is to be able to record EPCIS events from uh, Zebra devices, for instance, a scanner, through the HSDK to the Tangle. And that would be a very, a very nice application to the, uh, to, the, to the HSDK. And that could be combined with identity. So when you record your EPCIS event, you say, ah, and that was generated through an scan event made by this device, by this device, which identity is this. And what would be that identity? The identity that we created in the device onboarding flow that we, we have shown during, during the demo. So this is essentially the relationship between IOTA and EPCIS and the HSDK. Okay. Um, are there any other missing parts in order to go into production phase, like permanotes? How does a credential verifier know which permanote to connect to? So, so essentially, the connection to the permanote at the moment in the HSDK uh, configuration is automatic. So. So um, in the in the current software, you 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 are connecting to the instance of the permanote of the IOTA Foundation, but as I said before, you can deploy your own permanotes, and also in the future, in the near future, selective permanote. So so I would say that that is uh, that is available. The the identity framework itself supports resolving. Uh, identities through permanodes and it is properly configured in the HSDK. Okay, I think we're close. To the end here, um, any other questions? We're good. Um, and Thanks. we're close to the top of the hour. Did you have any last minute thoughts, Jose, that you wanted to ask? Sorry, Stacey, let me just jump yeah. in there. I think there's oh, an sorry. I think there's an additional follow-up question from Marcus there. Oh, just it's a follow-up. I thought it was just a comment. Okay. Um, I think the first question was asking if every time the holder 
has to prove he did his ownership for a verifier. This proof by signature will be written and persisted on the tangle. Jose. No, no, uh, there is a, that, that's an important point. So not necessarily credentials are going to be stored on the tangle. Uh, the only, the, in principle, the only document stored on tangle is the DID document. So the credential not necessarily can come uh, or not necessarily needs to be stored on tangle, can be in your wallet. Okay. Wait a minute, we've got another one came in. Is the Edge SDK open source? Yes, uh, we said that um, in one of the slides, the, it is open source and it is available in the Zebrades GitHub account. And uh, it is based uh, as well the IOTA identity framework and all IOTA identity nodes, permanent, all the stack is, is open source. And then, Jose, you did do a guest blog talking about the Zebra IOTA Edge SDK on our developer portal. So people can find even more information about that in terms of getting started with it. Um, I'll try and post the link to that in the chat as well. For everyone. Any final thoughts? Anyone have any other final questions? Okay. Um, we're at almost at the top of the hour, so we sincerely appreciate everyone attending today. Jose, what an excellent webinar for everyone. I think this is going to be important moving forward. Again, um, there's a couple of blogs coming in the pipes here. One of them I just posted there about getting started with the identity enabler of the Zebra IOTA Edge SDK. And then this presentation will also be recorded. So you'll see it in a couple of spots, um, probably by the end of the day up here and then on this channel. And then also we'll be placing it on our YouTube developer playlist. If there are any other questions in the meantime, um, please send those to developer at zebra.com and we'll make sure that they get to the right people, especially Jose here we're collaborating with and we're happy to do that for you. And with that, Jose, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thank you everybody for attending. See you. Okay, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.